Yes, so today's gonna be a fun one. I'm actually gonna set the camera down for a second. So today's gonna be a fun one. Um, what I wanna do is I kinda wanna talk about um, my dual battery setup. When I was setting up this dual battery system, there was really no good documentation or videos about how they did it. It was really just a showcase, um, which is all cool if you're just showing off your rig. Um, but I was installing it. If anyone knows me, I'm not mecha mechanically inclined whatsoever. Um, it builds computers, and that's about the most mechanically inclined thing I do. So I dove into this head first, not really knowing what to expect. Um, I watched a ton of videos about other cars and other setups, but when I got down to actually doing it for the GX, it was a little different. Um, I found out some things I didn't know, um, and I kind of started backwards, I think, of what most people would do. So I kind of want to explain my thought process. Um, I'm gonna put a diagram too of, of what I actually expected and what I wanted to happen and then how I accomplish it and what I did and the, the products I used. I'm gonna make a whole like parts list for everything I used. Um, I did most of my stuff off Amazon, um, including my the Red Arc, the VCDC charger. Um, so I'm gonna put all of the links for that. I'm gonna kind of have a whole documentation of what I did because I couldn't really find anything. It was really just even in the, in the GXOR Facebook group and stuff like that. It was just kind of showing what they did, not how they did it. So I'm gonna just basically walk you through it. So first things first, the way I did it, and the way why I think I kind of did it backwards of what most people do, is I actually did all of the like, what is that battery gonna charge before I actually installed the battery? So I actually had the fuse box, the fridge, um, up to the tent, power up to the tent. I had all of that routed, the fuse box ready to go, all the cables done, before I even had the second battery in it. Um, the reason I did that was really just so I had, um, I thought this would be the most complex part, right? Getting all the fuses, get everything wired throughout the truck. I thought that would be the most confusing part. Um, turns out that was kind of one of the easier parts and, and kind of the funnest part, I think, in my opinion, just because it was cool seeing it there. Um, so I'm gonna kind of explain where I put everything and how I routed the cables. Okay, to start, um, I've seen a few people do this, and if you follow me on Instagram, you know I'm in the middle of building a drawer system, um, because trust me, it's well needed. This is ridiculous, and this is annoying. If I have to get into my camping stuff, that's down here, it's a huge pain that I have to take everything out. So a drawer system's coming, don't worry guys, it's it's a, it's already halfway built, we just really have to build the drawers. Um, everything else is ready to go. So originally, I was gonna actually build the electrical into the drawer system, that was the main part, and I was gonna have a little piece here, everyone's seen it, right? Um, the track boxes and a few other people have like the, the electrical right here. I love that idea, but the more we were building the boxes, we realized that if we had more space out here for those things, that was less room for storage. And I was like, okay, well, I'll think about it. During the electrical process, I was like, I've seen people, you know, put their pieces right here, and I didn't realize how viable of an option it is. So that's what I did. So let me go ahead and open this up and kind of explain my thought process in here. Okay, so here it is. Um, so it's really simple, right? I have a fuse box here that's leading to all my other sources. Um, I also have, obviously, those connections that you saw. That flip that you saw, that flip switch, isn't actually connected yet because that's going to be connected to my water pump, um, which I don't have running yet, so there's no point in me doing the connections. Um, so it's really simple. Basically, I have these two wires leading right to the battery, but they're connected via an Anderson clip. The reason I did this is really so in case anything happened and I quickly need to disconnect, my, disconnect my fuse box, all I have to do is unclip this Anderson clip versus having to actually go in, rip them off or cut them off or do something in kind of an extreme manner. Um, I don't know much about electrical, so this made sense to me. Um, if it doesn't make sense to you, cool, don't do it. Um, but it made sense to me, that's why I did it. Um, something else I did different too is I actually um, did routed all these separate. So a lot of people daisy chain these the reason I didn't is because if my USB failed, and let's say I'm charging my daughter's iPad, right, on a long trip. If my USB failed, or my, uh, you know, cigarette lighter failed, I didn't want it to blow out the whole fuse for everything. I wanted everything to be separate, so it, the fuses are dirt cheap, right? Like, this just made sense to me, because if one thing blows, I don't want it to affect everything else. Which is why I actually routed the fridge. So this is the fridge cable. Um, so I actually routed the fridge directly into the fuse box. Um, because first I was going to do an Anderson clip. That was my first idea. And just have it because it was a stronger connection than the cigarette lighter, right? And it's going to be on a slide, so I don't want it to, you know, accidentally come undone. So I was going to do an Anderson clip, and then I realized Anderson clips are ginormous, and it's hard to get them in smaller sizes, like 12-gauge wire. So I didn't actually do that. 
Um, I ended up just stripping this and hard wiring it right into my fuse box, which has so far turned out great. So that's this area. That's really how this area works. Um, it's really not that complex. It looks kind of like a rat's nest, but it's not terrible. Um, but that's, that's this piece, right? The other thing about this too, is I have the fridge wire going to it, but I also, this is where all of the fuses, all, all of the connections um, start at. So including, let me step outside real quick, including I have a wire going all the way through here, coming out right here. Um, there was really no pretty way to do this, so maybe there is, but I didn't know it. Um, I didn't want to put, put any holes in the roof. I've seen people put holes in the roof and then use a watertight seal. Um, I really didn't want to do that just because it's a hole in the roof. Um, it's, that's, <laughs> it's, that's it, it's a hole in the roof, so I didn't want to really do that. So I routed it going up here, um, and I use a conduit for this, and I kind of just had it zip-tied. You can't really see it that well, but underneath my roof rack, going right into my tent. Um, so this is actually a really easy thing I did. Instead of it being like some crazy contraption up there, it's really just a, a cigarette lighter extension that I had stripped because um, it had, you know, like the, the battery connector. Um, I had stripped and just made it into and just connected it to my regular 12 gauge wire in here. And so far it worked perfect. Last night was our first time real, really, you know, using it. Um, we have uh, tent lights up there. Worked perfect. It was uh, better than expected. But basically, one the last thing I wanted to show on this is how to take this panel off. Because people have documentation on taking that side off because that's where the speaker lives. This side's really easy. All you do, whoop, pop that open. If you pop that little piece off right there, you have a bolt. I think it was a 12, a 12 mil socket. I don't remember exactly what it was. Um, but there's a little bolt there. You just take that piece off and then this, just pull it off. The whole thing pops off. There's another one of these down there. I didn't pull off the whole thing entirely, just enough to feed the wires through. I have small hands, so I was able to just kind of sneak in there, but that's that. Um, under here too, there is also a, you pull this back, whoop, there is also some bolts in there that'll focus. Some bolts in there that you do have to take off as well to take off that piece, um, but that, that took 10 seconds. Okay, so let's go ahead and show throughout the car. Okay, and excuse the mess a little, um, literally, that's what living with a toddler looks like. She dumped out her entire bag of chips, which is awesome. Um, but through here, so I routed the big cables, the big two cables, through here, underneath this, into this. I routed it all the way through, go around to this side, all the way through here, underneath the firewall, which was difficult. Um, None of that was easy. Everything kind of just pops off. Again, another bolt right here to take off this panel. But that was probably the hardest part and where most of my finger cramping came from. But that's where that happened. So that kind of explains how I routed the fuse, how I routed the, the main cables throughout the whole truck. If you guys have any questions on that piece, let me know because that is kind of the hardest part for me when I was trying to figure out how you route cables to this damn car. So. That's how I did it. Um, if you guys have any questions, just let me know. Okay guys, here is the engine compartment. It's not pretty, um, but it works great. And I want to explain the thought process and how I did this because this was the piece that had zero documentation um, down to the dam, you know, where you put the second battery. And there's, there's been multiple places on the Prado, it's different than the GX. So I want to explain my thought process and what I actually did because it was kind of a jimmy rig. Okay, so starting with the first part, this is the first part I did, so I'm gonna give it to you. Um, I routed cables from the firewall, which you can't really see, but I routed cables from the firewall here, all the way back here behind that engine, behind the little heat cover. Um, I didn't use conduit on this because I'll be honest with you, I didn't know that it would stick. I thought I would have to move that, and I did, and it's honestly just the pain in the butt to wear conduit right there, so I might, the next time you see this truck, it might have conduit, but right now it doesn't. So I routed that, on this side where the second battery sits. So this is the most common place people put the second battery in the GX. Um, there is, I think, off-grid off 4x4. They make a great battery compartment. It's really neat. They also have a second replacement from that piece over there. The thing that kind of turned me off about it was the, the weed way, right? It was like a two, three uh, week wait time or three to four weeks, something like that. Um, and I don't like to wait that long when I'm in the middle of a project. 
when I start something, I like to finish it in like a week or two. That's kind of like how I roll. I did all this in about three days <laughs> from not having any parts to finishing it. So I want to explain how I, I got the battery to stay there. But first I want to explain the wiring because this part was the most complex part and I will throw up a diagram for this too because this part was pretty, pretty confusing. But there is the battery charger right there. So that is the DC to DC charger. Um, it's the Red Oak BC, uh, BC, BC, one, two, two, five, three. Um, it has solar capabilities, which is cool. That will definitely be used in the future. Um, but okay, let me kind of explain it. So there's a few different wires on this that need to connect to different places throughout the car. Um, this was the most confusing piece for me because I don't know anything about this stuff. <laughs> so there's a few different wires, right? There's a brown wire, there's a red wire, there's a yellow wire, a blue wire, a green wire, an orange wire, and last but not least, a red wire. So all of those go to really important places. So let me explain where they go. So the red wire, which is this wire right here, this actually goes to your positive terminal on your start battery. So on the start battery, the most important piece is it's called a MIDI fuse. Um, for all of your positive connections, you're gonna wanna run some kind of fuse connection. Don't run any of those little itty bitty ones. This is a four gauge wire. Um, so I, I went kind of overkill on my wire just because you know, this is my main vehicle. I would rather there not be a fire. Um, these fuses also really um, add a lot of safety to it. So I had trouble finding a MIDI fuse. Uh, they're really weird and really hard to find. This was the only one I could really find. It's 100 amps, so I wasn't too worried about it. It's ugly and it's weird looking, but it works perfect. So that's what I've been using. Um, so I'll have this connected to that, and this just kind of connects to its regular terminals. I had to get a new terminal, battery terminal, because I actually um, broke the original, which is funny, but I did it. Um, but yeah, so that's how that first connection, that's the red wire. That's the easiest connection, done and done. We go over here, um, and the second wire that I connected was there's a black wire right here. This black wire actually connects right to your ground. So I made a ground connection right here on the chassis that I connected um, that black wire as well as the battery, the second battery. Um, I connected the ground wire there as well. So as long as this and that are connected to the same place, that's fine. You can actually connect this directly into the negative port if the negative on this is connected here. I didn't want to extend the cable though, so I just connected it right there and put them both there. It was a lot easier than I thought. So the next up is the brown wire. So the brown wire is the second most important piece. This actually goes, connects into the positive section of your battery. Again, there's a MIDI fuse right there. So that's that. And then down here, there's a few more wires that you see aren't really connected. The yellow wire is solar. Let's see if I can get a light on there so we can make it a little bit brighter. Okay, that works perfect. Okay, so there's a few different wires down there. So there's a yellow wire. I'm sorry if you can't hear me, the engine's pretty loud and I'm charging the battery. Um, there's a yellow wire, that's solar. So I'm not using that yet, so that's turned off, right? That's just kind of, has a cap on it and that's it. There's a blue wire that's needed on newer vehicles. Um, this is an 05 uh, Lexus GX470. So it does not have a small alternator, so it has a standard volt, so you don't actually have to connect that to anything. There's also an orange wire, which that depends, that changes the profile for the charger. Since I'm running a regular AGM battery, I actually don't connect that to anything. It runs at its standard 14 volts and we're good. And then there is also a green wire, which is an optional LED, um, which I just don't want to do, like driving that. There's also a, uh... oh no, that's it. That's all the wires down there. So. Those are all just end caps. Really, it's just the red wire, the black wire, and the brown wire need to go places in the GX. Pretty nifty. So the last piece to this puzzle is just connecting my battery wires, or my uh, my fuse box. So as you can see, they came out here, and <laughs> positive goes into positive, negative went into negative, and it was as easy as that. I am gonna be actually attaching another one of those mini fuses here. Um, the reason, honestly, I didn't is just because it didn't come in in time. They actually, Amazon lost the packet super annoying but that's the reason why i didn't do that um so far it's been fine um i figured since it's going to a fuse box that has all the threaded fuses it's gonna be fine but i'm still gonna end up putting a mini fuse there just for safekeeping my family's in this car a lot so it just kind of makes sense the last piece that i want to talk about though on this is how i mounted this so uh, originally i was going to go with the off-grid system which the uh, standalone is about 108 bucks um, I was like, all right, screw it, I gotta pay it, um, whatever. And again, I saw the lead time and I was like, yeah, yeah. Like, I don't wanna wait that long. So I have a local fab guy who did my body mount chop. He's also done other stuff as well. Um, I was like, hey, 
can you make more of these? He goes, oh yeah, I make them all the time. I was like, cool. So she was busy for the weekend. Um, and again, I wanted to get this running by, by yesterday. Um, and so that didn't work for me. So I woke up on this <laughs> Saturday morning and was like, okay, I'm gonna do it myself. I saw someone talk about how they did it themselves and I'm gonna try it. So what I did is I bought $15 worth of materials at AutoZone. It's just a battery, a plastic battery tray cover and then this little top piece right here that I did have to cut because it was like sticking up here. Um, and what I did was I really just, there was holes or there was one hole already and then I mounted two, uh, three more holes. I just drilled some holes in there and I just basically made some sand off screws. They're just these long, um, I think they're eight mil bolts. Um, and I basically just went through and just kind of stood them off, put um, nylon locking washers, put them on each side and just kind of locked the tray into place, plop the battery in and it worked perfect. It's literally, it, it looks janky. I know it does. I know it looks, it, it's a little crooked, um, but it works perfect. This isn't moved at all. Um, this was kind of bumpy getting in here and it's still here. It's working perfect. So really stoked on how it came out and it saved me. Uh, I mean, I spent $15 on the materials for the battery tray and I spent about $20 on the bolts. So it saved me a lot of money and it's fine. Just not as pretty, I guess. But uh, yeah, that's that's that. Easy peasy. Um, yeah, that's it for the engine bay. So that was it. That was kind of the, I don't want to call it a tour. Um, but that was kind of my guide, right? That was how I did it, how I routed the cables, where I went, um, resources I used. Again, I'm gonna throw the diagram up here. I'll, I'll have it again right here, but I'll also have a PDF um, that I'll create for you guys. It'll be on the link, link below. Um, this video might come out a day later, just because this is Monday. This is normally the days that I release my videos. Um, however, it is Monday, and we still gotta go home, and I gotta edit this, put it all together, so you'll probably see it Tuesday. Um, but I'll have everything below. I'm gonna make a whole shopping list of everything I needed um, and even specialty tools because again, I have no I'm not mechanically inclined at all um, So I didn't have anything like you know crimpers. I didn't have wire strippers I didn't have any of that. So I didn't have a fuse like fuses. I had to get all that um, So I'll put everything I, I use in the link below. I use four gauge wire um, For all of my cable m routing inside the engine bay. Um, it's not recommended next time I'd probably do six gauge just because it's four gauge is a bit overkill but I'm okay with overkill. Again, just because this is my main vehicle, um, I would rather there no, be no possibility of something going faulty. So I went overkill. Um, for my regular wire, I went 12 gauge. So to go to all the connections, I went with 12 gauge wire. That seemed to be the, uh, just a little bit beefier than the standard one it came with, which was like 16 gauge or something like that. Um, so that worked great, that worked perfect. Um, I'll link the fuse box below. Um, the only thing I can really recommend like this is something that changed the way I did it when I got this piece in because I didn't have it at first. Get a hydraulic crimper. Um, that four gauge, those four gauge crimps are really, really, really difficult. I am a small person, if you can't tell from this video. I'm a small person. Um, I don't have the arm strength to crimp four gauge. I don't know if anyone does. I really don't think that's a thing. The hydraulic press was amazing. Just kind of get used to what size you have to use for what socket you're, or what a, gauge wire you're using but that helped out tremendously um, but yeah that's that um, I'm gonna do another video of the drawer system once that's all finished that system is gonna be kick-ass I'm really excited for that um, fridge is up and running it's been working great I got the Costaway one the Costway from Amazon for 379 bucks and so far it's working great um, this morning it kind of had an error which was annoying I don't know what that was about um, gonna have to read into that but uh, it's working fine I turned on the car I think it was just low on power but uh, yeah, everything's working great. Um, if you guys have any questions at all, I, I purposely left out my daughter in this video. So if you don't know YouTube, if you have small children in your video, it'll automatically turn off your comments, um, which is good because it gets real creepy real fast. Um, so she's not in this video, she's hiding over there. Um, so if you guys have any questions, please go down below. Um, feel free to ask questions in the comments. Um, I'll put my Instagram below too. That's probably the most, the fastest way to get a hold of me. Just shoot me a message on Instagram. I'm usually pretty quick to answer those unless I'm out here, then I don't have any service. Um, but shoot me a message. I'm more than happy to answer anything. Um, the Facebook group for the GXs was a huge help for me. Um, I watched a ton of YouTube videos. I watched a ton of everything. I just wish there was something like this. So that's why I'm here making this video. But that's it guys. That's all I have for you. If you guys have any questions again, shoot them below. Make sure to like and subscribe. Also, side note that I wanted to kind of put on display and be upfront about. 
I had no idea what I was doing. Um, I still don't really know what I was doing. Um, so if you guys, if any, any experts here in electrical engineering or anything like that, want to come in here and basically tell me what I did wrong, please do. Um, I made this channel, I did all of this in order to learn more stuff. So if that means you have to tell me, then tell me, please. Teach me, I'd like to know more, but this is me just showing you how someone who doesn't know what they're doing managed to do this and it works, so.